少女战士。Welcome. In this video, Chapter Seven, Seven Emergency, and Seven Night of Girls Frontline will be summarized. Throughout the video, there will be spoilers for the story of Girls Frontline. If you don't want to be spoiled, please go and play the game. Continuing from Chapter Six, it's five days after G and K withdrew from Area S zero eight. Hellion calls the commander, saying that Kruger has approved their application to move from S zero nine to S zero five, and the reassignment will occur in three days' time. The commander's duty in S zero five is to work with a security contractor in the area, which consists of daily patrols, regular reports, and assisting HQ. After the daily patrol is complete, Kalina sends a report to Hellion that some SF were seen on the border of S zero five. Both the commander and Kalina call Hellion to give their report. After it's given, Hellion switches channels and tells the commander that their request is impossible to grant. Said request is seeing AR team, which only Hellion and the supervising T dolls are allowed to do. Hellion reassures the commander that it isn't their fault or because of the last mission. The incident cost G and K all of S zero eight, which caused a massive economic loss. Despite their efforts to keep it hidden, G and K's rep has taken a hit. Due to Star having parapuli, all those who came into contact with it need to be treated with extreme caution, which is why AR team is in detention until it's confirmed they're clean. Despite the commander's concern for them, Hellion reassures that AR team will be all right. It's also why G and K allowed the commander to move their area of operations to S zero five, where the detention center is located. But contact is still forbidden. The next day, Kalina says that the SF troops spotted on the border were just a small reinforcement group passing by, meaning the commander can ignore them and leave them to other units. HQ, however, still wants the commander to destroy their command post, which will give them enough time to react if SF is in the area. After the command post is cleared, Kalina reports that the op went well, though nothing significant was at the command post. Hellion also wants the commander to call in after the op, as she probably sorted out Kalina's request. Commander calls Hellion, who congratulates them, but also reminds them not to let their guards down. Additionally, about Kalina's request, Hellion plays a recording. The voices of M16, Sop, and M4 can be heard. M4 assures the commander that they're safe and doing well, and not to worry about them too much. All three look forward to seeing the commander again. An audio recording is the best thing Hellion could do at the moment. The commander says they'll send over an audio recording later for M4 and the rest of AR team. The next day, Kalina says there's more patrols to do. Though they were both looking forward to more peaceful days, it does take some getting used to. The commander apologizes, but Kalina doesn't believe their decision to move was wrong. Regardless, they need to take care of the small-scale activities that SF are doing in the area. Now the evening, the commander compiled the daily report and the audio file for AR team. Meanwhile, in the detention center, the routine inspections for AR team have just finished. They've been doing the same daily routine for over a week now, as 16 Lab is still working on a counter to Parapuli. Sop can't take it much longer, with Star being gone and SF doing as they please. M16 promises Sop that they will get their revenge, as Hellion promised them an op when they're released. If that's the case, Sop can't wait to get started and find the SF mastermind. M4 snaps at Sop to keep quiet before apologizing and leaving the two. M45 announces that dinner is ready, asking if M4 wants to eat in the cafeteria or her quarters. It's cinnamon rolls again, due to the lack of readily available ingredients in the detention center and HQ being worried about supplies coming in or out. M16 suggests that they all eat in the cafeteria since they all need to talk to Hellion later. Plus, there's the recording from the commander. M4 declines, saying she's not in the mood. M45 tries to get M4 to eat, as ordered by G and K. M4 asks who they are to detain her, as she's on loan from 16 Lab. M16 tells her to calm down, as Negev enters and asks what the commotion is about. M16 says that AR team's neural framework is different from IOP dolls, leading to more volatile emotions. Negev tells M4 to try and look like a leader, as well as being locked up herself since she went to rescue AR team. 
M4 comments that she didn't ask Negev to rescue them. Negev fires back, saying, despite how good she is, Negev can only act on commands from a commander. M45 interrupts and says that it's almost time for Hellion's call. An unknown voice is on the other end, saying that they finally found M4. M16 tells them to show her their face as the voice slowly claps on the other end. The voice only wants M4, and the rest are expendable. Sop tells M45 to duck, but she gets shot. M16 drags M45 to safety and reports that comms are jammed. Sop says that they're surrounded by SF. M16 asks M4 to give the order to counterattack, as if they don't, they'll die in the detention center. M4 is unsure due to the suddenness of it, as well as not knowing many of the T-Dolls. But that's exactly why M4 needs to command, since she's the only one who can command right now. M4 asks Sop and M16 to buy her time as she calibrates her modules and improves her condition. Seven minutes after the daily patrols end, Hellion radios in that there's an emergency. All comms have been cut with the detention center, with the situation being exactly like the last Parapuli attack. A large SF force have moved to attack and take over the detention center, and the commander is to destroy the SF units outside to relieve some pressure on those within. Meanwhile, in the detention center, which is codenamed Mario's Princess for whatever reason, it's been an hour since the counterattack against the SF forces had started. FNC, FN49, and Scorpion are all firing at the SF units from the fourth floor medical room. 49 has run out of ammo, and Scorpion reports that there are too many on the floors below. The three begin to panic and argue with each other, until Scorpion finally says that since there's no commander in stratagem, they don't know what to do. A large boom occurs, with M4 appearing before the three and telling them to cease fire and retreat to the common room on the third floor. The three accept the orders and retreat. Five minutes later, M16 and M4 go over the list of combat-capable T-Dolls, deciding who to care for and who can fight. Saab asks about the T-Dolls on the first floor and in the basement, with FNC suggesting that they stage a rescue mission. 49 raises the concern that it'd be dangerous due to the lack of comms, with Negev stating that they do have a commander present. 49, FNC, and Scorpion are confused by this statement. M4 calms everyone down, saying the commander must be taking care of the units outside of the detention center due to the weakened attack compared to one hour ago. All they need to do is finish off the enemies within the building. M4 will be commanding the dolls in the building, as she has a module that allows her to issue commands. If it's called for, she can give orders in a commander's place, even if comms are down. Verbal orders work as well. FNC brings up that Scorpion was abandoned by AR team in the past, with Scorpion explaining that it was their original commander who abandoned them. If it wasn't for M4 and AR team, she would have met her end there. M4 gives the command to attack the first floor and basement. She needs to stop eating her heart out and live through this with her friends. Three hours later, Kalina asks if the commander is still in direct conflict, as SF units are continuously pouring into Area S05. If it continues, the detention center may not be able to hold out. Suddenly, an encrypted call from Persica comes in, saying that the attack on the detention center has an ulterior motive. Because of this, she dispatched RO635. Ro introduces herself as a newly developed T-Doll from 16 Lab. An SF ringleader has set up a comms outpost in the northeastern valley, and it needs to be destroyed. By destroying it, it will prevent more SF reinforcements from coming into S05. Kalina questions Ro's sources, with Ro responding that she was specially developed to take care of circumstances like these. The commander decides to trust Ro and attack the comms outpost. The commander's team eventually reaches the outpost and plants explosives. Two minutes later, the outpost is obliterated. A voice named Dreamer says that they didn't expect the cat and mouse game to end so quickly, but they don't care as she has already reached her destination. Dreamer rises from her seat so that she may quote-unquote stretch too. Meanwhile, on the second floor of the detention center, the T-Dolls have just finished clearing out the rest of the SF units. Negev compliments M4 on her commanding, with 49, FNC, and Scorpion also praising her. M4 stops and reminds them that they have to take care of the injured first before the celebration, and to refill on supplies before reconvening at the first floor lobby. 
M4 is happy that she can finally leave and come face to face with Judge again. A voice from behind is thankful that she made it in time, as the lights turn off. M4 asks why everyone suddenly stopped talking. A silhouette appears before M4, backlit by a glowing SF symbol. The figure commends M4 for still standing as she must be different. M4 asks who the figure is as the figure slowly approaches. M4 tells the figure to stop, firing at her, but completely missing every shot. The figure hugs M4, stating that she wants to finish what Star failed to do. M4 screams in agony and asks for her to stop. Five minutes after destroying the comms outpost, Kalina notifies the commander that they're being hailed by SF on a public channel. The commander accepts the call with Dreamer being on the other end. Dreamer is targeting the detention center and is much more lethal than the SF units from before. She plans on killing all G and KT dolls in sight with her own hands. Kalina asks the commander what to do as they can't defend the detention center and intercept Dreamer at the same time. Ro calls in and says to leave the mission to her. She has arrived at the center and is about to infiltrate, rescuing all trapped T dolls, including M4. Kalina is worried about the jam, which, according to Ro, isn't due to Parapuli, but something much worse. Thankfully, Ro brought something to deal with the threat. The commander transfers control over to Ro so that she may focus on intercepting Dreamer, and Dreamer says she looks forward to their reception. 35 minutes after engaging with Dreamer's forces, the Mastermind is unable to decrypt something that M4 has, summoning M4 to come back with her to base. Ro announces that she won't bring anyone with her, slinging explosives, grenades, and bullets at the Mastermind. The Mastermind is confused as to how the T-Dolls are up again, with Ro explaining that the device she carries is a neutralizer for the Mastermind's jammer. Sop grabs M4, while 49, FNC, and Scorpion throw smoke grenades to cover their retreat into an air raid shelter. The Mastermind asks where her weapon is, with Dreamer reminding her that the Mastermind decided not to bring a weapon. But that's why Dreamer allocated part of her troops to her. Neither can get into the air raid shelter, as the Mastermind doesn't have the power and Dreamer is confronting the commander. The Mastermind comments that Dreamer isn't as helpful as Agent, with Dreamer suggesting a retreat. The Mastermind accepts and goes outside to wait for pickup. 20 minutes later, Dreamer's troops withdraw, with another 15 minutes passing before the evac of the detention center is complete. While on her way to check in on M4, M16 runs into M45 and asks how M4 is doing. M45 says that it's not looking good, as M4 has been muttering to herself and not talking to anyone else. M45 asks what they should do now, with M16 saying that she needs to be taken in with the other injured, and they need to leave ASAP. The commander is physically present at the detention center due to special permission being given from Hellion because SF destroying their power source and comm system. The commander is currently on their way to the garden on the first floor to get some info from Ro. Meanwhile, the commander walks into the garden and sees Sop with her head on Ro's lap. Ro tells the commander to be quiet as Sop just fell asleep. She also asks the commander to not inform GNKHQ about her presence as she's there on Persica's personal request. They don't have to worry about M4 either as Persica's working hard to fix the problem. For the time being, Ro will take M4's place in leading AR Team's investigation into SF. The ring leader that invaded the detention center was the mastermind of SF. GNK is ready to settle the score with SF for good. In 7 Emergency, it starts with Ro asking M16 if it's the agreed time. M16 confirms that it is, saying that she didn't know what she expected, hoping to hear someone's voice the second before the call ended telling M16 it was a joke. After the incident in S08, GNK completely withdrew as they couldn't afford to search a wasteland filled with SF units for a single T-Doll. The scouts sent to S08 reported nothing in the 39 days that they monitored. As a special T-Doll made by 16 Lab, Star wasn't equipped with a complete neural cloud, meaning that HQ can't reconstruct her identity. In other words, Star doesn't exist anymore. If that wasn't terrible enough, things got worse with the attack on M4. For now, Ro and M16 need to stay strong and prepare for revenge. 
M16 asked Roe to give the briefing. Roe explained to the commander that they are to track an SF ringleader, GNK's number one criminal who perpetrated the assaults on the areas under GNK command. The ringleader in question, Dreamer, returned to her base after coming out into contact with GNK over a month ago. M16 is gung ho on destroying her, but Roe says that they were unable to determine if the Dreamer they saw was the original or a dummy, not to mention her powerful armament. However, Roe enlisted the help of some friends to gather info. Said friends are her former squad mates, see Chapter 4 and Night Story section. In the meantime, M16 and Saab are to rendezvous with their former squad mates at the pickup point, with the commander covering for them as they make their way to meet the other T-Dolls. M16 makes it safely to the meeting point, a safe house, to discover that there's no one there. She looks around for a drop box before hearing a loud noise behind her. M16 goes towards the noise and catches the perp, AAT-52. M16 asks what 52 is doing there, with 52 introducing herself as a member of Squad Pallet, there to assist M16 on Ro's orders. M16 asks why 52 hid, with 52 explaining that she got spooked by M16, assuming she was Dreamer. Suddenly, the sound of an engine being started goes off in the distance, with 52 telling M16 to duck. A building in the distance is annihilated by an explosion, caused by Dreamer's heavy artillery. RO checks in to see if the two are alright, before telling them that the shell was aimed at Sop's destination. 52 asks about Sten, with Ro telling her not to worry as there's an air raid shelter there. M16 recognizes the artillery Dreamer is using saying that it sounds familiar. Rowe says that she would recognize it as M16 was one of the first to witness the use of the weapon. A flashback to episode 5, an AR team being attacked by the weapon occurs. RO explains that it's the Jupiter Cannon, a large-scale electromagnetic tactical mortar. It has superior range and velocity, and it just destroyed their last hope of saving Star. 52 asks if M16 is alright, but they should get to Sop's location and find out if the two there are also alright. 52 reassures M16, saying that their squad has come under Jupiter fire before, and they have contingencies to deal with them. RO radios in, saying that they just contacted the commander, and that M16 is to rescue Sop, the rest of Team Pallet, and clean up the nearby SF units. M16 arrives at Sop's location, which has just been bombed to rubble. M16 calls out to Sop, saying that she's coming in, before spying SF body parts strewn about, bullet holes, and scratches on the walls, asking herself what happened there. Sten radios M16, saying that she's in the underground shelter, and the password to open the door. M16 goes down into the shelter, with Sten greeting her and asking if it's safe outside. M16 confirms that it is, then asks where Sop is. Sten says that Sop had her stay in the shelter while Sop alone went to deal with the situation outside. After the barrage, Dreamer appeared. Sten has an audio recording of what happened. The recording is of Dreamer and Sop talking. Dreamer calls Sop a monster for tearing her units apart, much like Intruder told her, and that T-Dolls shouldn't have desires, like Sop's desire to rip Dreamer apart and hear her scream. Dreamer proposes a riddle for Sop. I stopped you from going after Star with artillery. I deliberately fed info to Star through comms, leading her to investigate alone until a jamming module was planted on her. I brought the mastermind of SF to Area S05 and caused the meltdown in M4's neural system. Who am I? She is SFT doll SPACA, commonly known as Dreamer. She knows what Sop is. She knows what AR team will turn into. Sop screams that she'll kill Dreamer. Dreamer beckons Sop to come find her, kill her, and give Dreamer happiness with her own hands. The recording ends. M16 plans on taking Sten back to make sure she's fine, and then plans to find Sop. Sten says that Pallet does have someone who's been monitoring everyone's whereabouts off the field. Makarov. M16 asks Makarov if she has Sop's location which she does. Sop is currently in a firefight with Dreamer's troops at an abandoned factory, and she can't tell if Dreamer herself will intervene. Both agree that cutting comms for the SF echelons is the best course of action, as will prevent them from getting reinforcements. 
Roe arrives at the rendezvous point that was agreed with by Type 92, and calls out to 92 asking where she is. 92 appears behind Roe and is then scolded for trying the same thing multiple times. Roe then has Sten hack into the mortar, though it's hard to get her head around. 92 sends the setup to others, saying that they need to quickly adapt to it. Roe wants to hurry up and get it over with, as they're running out of time, as M16 and Makarov are going to get SOP, and Roe is worried that Dreamer will fire another volley. 92 asks if Dreamer would blow herself up, with Roe explaining that Dreamer in S05 has been dummy since day one. Meanwhile, with M16 and Makarov preparing to storm the factory, SOP and Dreamer are fighting. Dreamer asks Sop if the SF units were enough to satiate her appetite, with Sop retorting that it's far from it and won't be enough at all without Dreamer. Dreamer wants Sop to kill her and make her happy. Before Sop goes in for the kill, M16 shoots Dreamer's dummy dead. Dreamer radios in, poo-pooing M16 for ruining her fun. M16 acts triumphant as she destroys Sop's target, meaning Dreamer can't toy with her anymore. But Dreamer never said she only had one dummy. M16 yells at Sop, telling her it's a trap, but Sop won't listen. Makarov gets Sop to pipe down for a while and tells M16 that they need to get out ASAP as Dreamer was planning to get them in one go. Makarov tells M16 to get down before M16 does something, telling Makarov to apologize to M4 if they both make it out of there alive. Three minutes later, the area was targeted and shelled by the Jupiters. Makarov asks if all American T-Dolls are prone to heroics, with Roe saying that they're never known for their level heads. 52 comments how RO is finally smiling, citing her joining AR team being the cause for that. They succeeded, at least this time, barely, comments Makarov, but Roe did prove to be a good leader. Roe thanks Persica's hacking program for working, as the velocity of the shot from the Jupiter was significantly weakened. With that, the Jupiters have been impaired, proving SF's new toy isn't invincible after all. Sen asks about the others, as they're hurt, pinned down, and have SF troops searching for them. Ro contacts the commander, telling them that they successfully neutralized the mortars, however, they may encounter Dreamer and her forces on the retreat. The commander is to keep the T-Dolls safe as they evac. The morning after, Makarov reports that Dreamer was operating through her dummy the entire time, as expected. 52 invites Roe for a big dinner, but Roe declines as she needs to talk with M16 and SOP. Midnight, three hours after Roe finished her report to the commander, Persica calls her, asking Roe about how the program worked. Roe says it was awkward to work with, but they eventually got the hang of it. Persica says that the program was coded from an SF authorization module that they only cracked last month, the same one that AR team got from Safehouse 3. Persica asks if M16 and SOP are alright, with Ro reporting that SOP's neural system has stabilized and she's getting repaired. As for M16, she and Ro had a few drinks and chatted at the bar about work, GNK, SF, M4, and Star. Persica is sure M4 will be fine. As for Star, she's still working on it, but she is worried about Ro and if she's okay. Ro is aware that she must become stronger than Star to avenge her, and she can't wait to prove herself. The call ends with M16 commenting on how long it lasted. Ro asks for comments on Team Pallet, with M16 saying that if 52 shut up a bit more, she'd give them an 8. Ro has improved quite a bit, which she's doing for AR Team. M16 reminds Ro that she's a member of AR Team and their true companion. So now that RO is one of them, has she decided what they should do? She has. Their vengeance is about to begin. Chapter 7 Night starts with a conversation between Negev and Jericho. The two discuss how they spend their last day on Earth. Negev would give herself a holiday to enjoy the things she likes, such as reading, listening to music, and watering flowers. She does have some regrets, but she wouldn't let them get in the way. Negev asks if the test is still not over, as it's been two hours, and the rescue party may not find them. The rescue party can't get to them, which is why Jericho wanted to chat. Negev gives in and tells that she led Jericho's squad in a mission a week ago, while she recovered. There, they encountered Dreamer. Negev begins her retelling with Galil getting her to snap out of her daydream. 
Negev says that she was thinking of something, with Galil repeating Negev's famous quote of, Thinking is for idiots, prodigies need only their ingenuity at her. Negev says that they both need to be cautious, with Galil scoffing at the notion of Negev being cautious. Negev radios into the commander, briefing them that the mission they're on is highly dangerous. They, Negev and Galil, are heading deep into SF territory to retrieve something. The ringleader of the area is still unidentified, and conflict with SF units is likely. After combat finishes, Negev sends Galil off to the opposite command post where Tavor and the others are. 30 minutes later, Galil radios Negev, reporting that the target location is within the abandoned car factory, just as the intel said it would be. Said factory is a three-hour walk away, if there are no enemies or obstacles in the way. That's precisely why Negev sent Galil ahead to scout and gather intel, as the commander is about to move the echelons forward. Negev will also check in on Tar's infiltration. It then cuts back to Jericho and Negev talking, with Jericho criticizing Negev for how reckless she is. The two bicker back and forth over what Jericho taught Negev, how T-Dolls think and have thoughts, and how Negev doesn't want to forget Jericho because of her neural cloud. Negev radios the commander, telling them that everything is going smoothly and they have yet to encounter this legendary enemy that everyone is talking about. Tar radios Negev, saying that the situation has changed, as her movement alerted SF units to her present, causing them to group up at the car factory. However, if they get there in 30 minutes, they'll still have a chance to retrieve the target without direct confrontation. Negev asks Galil if she understood that, before a worried Galil radios in that she's been spotted and surrounded, and is in need of support in a retreat route. Galil sends over the fastest route in the time it will take to get to her, and begins to rush over to Galil's location to rescue her. Tar radios Negev, asking if she's leaving Galil behind. Negev says not to worry about her, as she can only choose one side, so they're choosing the more important one. Negev reported her whole plan, and the commander trusts her, then asks if Tar can handle the inside of the car factory. Tar can only keep the gates open for three minutes, which is stretching it for Negev. Negev will give the order to open the door, and rushes over to the car factory. Negev makes it to the exterior of the factory, with Tavor asking her to draw SF units away from the factory as they'll be arriving at her position in 15 minutes. Negev says that she has no hands to spare, but they will be back in any minute. The they in question are Galil and Uzi, who bicker back and forth over who rescued who. Negev gets them to stop arguing and sends them to help Tar. Negev has plans for the dummy in the car factory, with Dreamer coming on the radio, asking whose dummy she's talking about. Dreamer has been watching them this whole time from her dummy, but Negev is there to finish the job. Despite it being the first time the two of them talked, Dreamer has already grown fond of Negev, and asked to eat her for whatever reason. Dreamer taunts Negev, asking if she's hiding from her and if she's really that scary. Negev tells the commander that direct conflict is imminent and suggests engaging Dreamer and wearing her down, when Negev's squad goes around back to retrieve the target. Combat finishes, and Dreamer collapses to the ground, struggling to crawl towards Negev. Sure, the dummy had amazing battle prowess, but her computation speed was laughable compared to Dreamer's actual body. If Dreamer actually intended on defending the factory, she would have killed them all before they even went inside. The rest of Negev's squad radios her, and asks if they can go home as they retrieve the target. Negev gives the go-ahead to withdraw, telling the Dreamer dummy that she was never actually controlled by Dreamer herself. The dummy says that she must be kidding, as no one ever dared set foot in the factory before. Negev says that no one ever entered because the previous agenda thought it was unwise to enter Dreamer's den unprepared. Negev pities the dummy. Another reason why they didn't enter before is because it wasn't strategically important anymore. The dummy will tell Dreamer what Negev did here, but in reality, the real Dreamer won't care. The dummy is just a toy to her. Negev can't kill something that isn't alive, so she'll just leave the dummy to rot. Jericho asks what Negev and her squad retrieve, with Negev answering that it was a box about the size of a person. Back at base, Negev praises the squad for her job well done. The rest of the squad asks Negev why they went into an SF zone that was off-limits to find a dusty old box. The whole mission wasn't sanctioned by GNK either. 
Just as Negev is about to open the box, she breaks down in tears, forgetting what was inside. Negev tells Jericho that everything was a lie. She never received any mission, nor was she ever a team leader. Galil, Tar, Uzi were all deployed to other squads. She never saw them, she never saw the commander either. While Jericho was away, she adjusted her own neural cloud, hoping that one day she could do something. But a neural cloud like Negev's will never pass the test. She failed. She wasn't qualified to consume her remaining mask. Jericho grabs Negev and says that this is the true Negev. A weak, panicky, unopinionated piece of junk that relies on masks to survive. Even if Negev didn't pass the test, she must consume the mask and leave this place alive. But Negev is scared. Her neural cloud won't be able to handle it. She'll forget many things, including Jericho. Jericho tells Negev that they'll meet again and be the person who she is. Negev snaps out of her daydream, saying that the box contains memories. Memories from each of the squad. Negev slowly opens the box. Galil recognizes the person inside, while Uzi asks who it is. Tar tells Negev that it's just the corpse of an abandoned tea doll, and asks for the reason why they had to get it. Negev gently touches the corpse, then grabs her toolkit. All they need is the neural cloud. Tar says that it's Jericho, and asks what she has to do with them. Negev says that they'll know soon, as she's a part of them all. Thank you for watching. Please follow my Twitter for updates, and please check out my other Azure Lane and Arknights videos as well.